Ned Stark had a lot of honour, most men know, in the Seven Kingdoms do know, and that is the title of this episode. Welcome back guys to Fog Entertainment, it's time to review Season 2, Episode 7, A Man Without Honour. So that pretty much sums up a lot of people that don't have the name Stark. It does, it definitely does, but none other than Greyjoy. I hate the Greyjoys, I don't like them, they're weird. The whole, oh, our skin was salted by the sea, sort of talk. I don't like that. What about Ned Stark? Bend the fucking knee to Ned. None of this sea salt pish. Yeah, so Fionn Greyjoy has betrayed the Starks. He's That's where we'll start. We'll start in Winterfell. So he wakes up. He finds that Osha is gone. I mean, surprise, surprise. Could he, could he not see this coming? He blames though, one of his um, banner men, Black Lauren. He beats him up and he orders everyone to find Osha and to find the Stark boys. So... They lead a chase. They don't come across them, but they do come across a farm that has two boys that are, I guess, similar to Bran and Rickon. So, Fionn Greyjoy, we can only assume, burns these bodies and then hangs them up because obviously he's not killing the Starks and it looks like he's killed these two kids. And for what reason? He, he burns them, he hangs them in the end... But at Winterfell, but like, why has he done this? He's just like literally killed two random. I think he's done it to make it look like he has killed the Stark boys. True, but I mean, he still killed two kids that didn't deserve to die. <sighs> yeah, this Greyjoy turn, man, it just, it's bizarre. I didn't see it coming. I mean, I thought it was pretty naive of Rob Stark to let him go, but I mean, it's one thing siding with his father, taking over Winterfell, killing kids, killing the, one of the top guys at Winterfell as well. I mean, he's, he's lost it. He's lost the head. Last episode, he took a head. This episode, he's lost his head. So we'll see what happens with Fionn Greyjoy. But pretty much, I think the power's got to him. He's took over Winterfell. But at what cost? Can he redeem himself? Probably not. I think he's went way too far here. And he's going to have to answer for his crimes. I mean, he might be okay now. But once Rob Stark, once the Stark men get back there and they outnumber the Greyjoys, I think Fionn is fucked. Let's move on to uh, Harrenhal then, where we see Tywin Lannister discussing the assassination of a uh, armoury lork who we've seen getting taken out with a dart in the last episode. That was pretty damn cool. He's he's talking to Sir Gregor Glegain how he believes that that was an assassination attempt on himself. And I just don't like the new mountain. The actor just doesn't really seem as intimidating. He doesn't look as... Like strong and fucking big and meaty. Yeah, he just he just he doesn't, doesn't look like a mountain. Yeah, he just looks like a tall guy. He looks like a hill. Aye. No, he do, he does though. Like I don't know. Like the other guy didn't even speak. He just gr grunted. I actually don't like the fact they're actually giving this guy lines and shit. He's got more lines in the hound, and I thought this guy's supposed to be like an unsociable prick. I li I like season one mountain. That's what I've got to say. The season one mountain also looked like a beast of a man. This guy just looks a bit tall. Yeah, he doesn't look. Yeah, doesn't look. Not, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't seem as intimidating. He's not a freak of nature. But Tywin, he wants to get to the end of this, and he orders the mountain to do it. He orders him to go burn local farms down and get those villagers talking. He needs to get to the bottom of it because a attempt on a Lannister's life can't go unanswered. And he speaks to Arya, not quite about this, but about the fact that she addresses him the wrong way. You're saying, "My lord, not my lord." Now, where did you learn that? Oh, my mother, Tywin. You know what? Arya's a good liar for like an eleven-year-old. She is. Was she, it not her father she said she learned it from? Father, mother, whatever, you know what? She can cover her own tracks better than half the people in this show. And I, I, Ty, I even think if Tywin found out this is Arya Stark right here and then, he'd respect her. I think he'd keep her alive. I'd go as far as saying that. I will. I wouldn't go that far. Anyway, Tywin believes that, you know, she speaks well for someone that is a commoner. Doesn't speak like a commoner. Is Tywin believing her? Is Tywin buying the bullshit that she's selling though? Who knows? Uh, then we move it to King's Landing, Sansa Stark comes to thank the Hound, but the Hound says, uh, basically says he's a cunt, that he wasn't brave, and that a dog doesn't need courage to fight off rats, and, I mean, he done a good job, like, you can say a dog doesn't need courage, but it was three on one, he and He says that... he didn't do it for Sansa, he said last episode... Sansa. He... Sansa, Sansa, he said he didn't do it for Ta Tyrion last episode, who'd he do it for? Did he do it for Joffrey? Maybe he done it for himself. Did he do it for himself? He has a conscience. The Hound. The Hounds of Justice, delivering justice. Yeah, uh, Sansa then has her first ever period, and at this point she's absolutely bricking it because this means that she will now have to have a son with Joffrey, so she tries to hide this. Uh, she indeed tries to help her by threatening one of the maids that's seen the blood, 
But before they can flip the bed, she walks in and Sandor Cregain is just sitting there and he sees it. But you know what? I was kind of thinking because of the hounds that dislike for the Lannisters and more particular Joffrey that he might not actually say anything but we go straight into the next scene where Sansa is sitting with Cersei and she's talking about how she can now have kids with uh, Joffrey. So yeah, it looks like the Hound did indeed grass. I mean, I guess he is loyal to the king, therefore he kind of has to refuel this but he quite clearly doesn't like the Lannisters and he especially doesn't like Joffrey but I guess it's his duty to to tell Joffrey this, so... I mean, he's a big enough guy. Could he not literally just be like, here, I don't like you, I'm leaving. <laughs> Could he not just do that, no? Walk out the front door. Do you not have him and his brother not create, have a spin-off? <laughs> Fucking tag team, just butchering farmers everywhere they go. Yeah, um, Cersei then pretty much admits that Joffrey's a bit of a dick and that Sansa might never love him, but she will love their children. And she advises them to love no one but her children. She also referred to here that, like, ah, uh, Robert didn't care when the kids were being born but Jamie had to be in the room yeah basically just saying yep the incest stories are true they're true brother absolutely so yeah Sansa asks should she not love Joffrey but Cersei's only answer is you can try little dove I mean does anybody really love Joffrey I mean fuck me does Cersei at this point even like Joffrey See, if she thought she could get out of this marriage right or out the king's landing without any like repercussions she would She's in there out of fear. Sansa? Aye. No shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So no shit. You can say love and shit like this. It's meaningless words at the end of the day. I need out of there. Yeah, then later that night, Cersei meets with Tyrion and she expresses regret at having children with her own brother, Jamie, And she wonders if that's why Joffrey's a piece of shit because of her and Jamie's sins. But Tyrion points out, nah, <laughs> your other two bastard children are, <laughs> are, are turned out all right, Marcella and Tommen. So maybe maybe it's just unlucky. Maybe Joffrey's just an arsehole, regardless of who Cersei slept with. Could be. Uh, he also pointed out the fact that the Targaryens have done a lot of this incest shit and it worked it all right for them for hundreds of years. So yeah, to keep the bloodline pure. So yeah, we'll see about that. In the Westerlands, Rob Stark. We feel I don't know. Feels like Rob Stark hasn't really done much this season. I know he's winning wars, but. We're not really seeing much of it. We're just hearing about it. Yeah. Can we actually see him win some wars? There's a lack of action, isn't there? There's not much happening. I, I definitely expect it more in uh, Season 2. We haven't really seen it, though. Uh, if, so, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Not a lot happens with Rob Stark here. I actually, you know what I didn't like about this, right? Essentially, Alton Lannister, or you're being good, you're going to be kept in the same cage as Jamie Lannister, right? Until whatever. And then this, like, uncomfortable length of scene... Goes on for about 20 minutes where these two are talking, Jamie Lannister, who we've barely seen this season, by the way. Yeah, he just talks about being a squire and how this guy was a, what was his name, Alton Lannister, yeah. how he was a great squire. I know and I said it went 20 minutes, right, I'm over exaggerating, but I, I would say this went about 10. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and it did not need to go 10. No, it doesn't. Jamie's um, putting this guy over, saying you were great. Now you can, and after like 20 minutes, we finally get to the point, Jamie's going to use this guy to try and escape. So he, he does, he bludgeons his own, is it cousin, I believe, or nephew or something like that? To, to death. Uh, he then kills one of the Stark army men that come in to check on Alton. He tries to escape. He eventually gets caught. One of the, the, the father of the man that he killed, though, wants to just basically behead Jamie Lannister right there, but... Caitlin says, no, we need him alive. Caitlin then visits Jamie that night to say that he's got no honour, he's got no loyalty. But Jamie says, well, Ned Stark didn't have much loyalty when he brought a bastard son home to you. And this really pissed off uh, Caitlin. No, it really did piss off Caitlin because Jon Snow wasn't a very popular man. Every time you see him, remind you of that whole oh, big, the honourable Ned Stark betraying you. You know what, right? Don't really. Well, we know we know the we kind of know the ins and outs of what Ned did, but he fucking grew up, Caitlin. It's not Jon Snow's fault at the end of the day. Jamie Lannister always seems to have a comeback, though. He does. He always see when you think the the blacks behind the white. He always seems to manoeuvre the balls in his position. Nah, he just fuck. He flips the table on his head. If Caitlin was playing checkers, then Jamie Lannister was certainly playing chess. So, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna bash the Kingslayer, make sure that you don't have any dirty but history. See, what? I mean, the smarter person here doesn't take this bad, and she's like, I don't care about that. I love John as one of my own. Even if it's bullshit. You're playing into Jamie's hands here by fucking letting him get in your head. 
Yeah, uh, she takes Brienne's sword and then we don't really see anything after that, so is she going to kill Jamie Lancer? Highly doubt it. Uh, beyond the Wall, not a lot happened. We basically just had a full, not a full episode, but the episode Beyond the Wall was dedicated to just Jon Snow and Ygritte, who is his prisoner. He's trying to get back with his group, the Night's Watch, but she manages to lead him away. It's just filler shit, man. She finds out that his father was Ned Stark and she has a bit more respect for him because... Ned Stark, I guess, belongs to the North. Ned Stark's name carries a lot of weight in the North. You don't know who you're fighting against up here, John. If you're, if you're, if you're a member of Ned Stark's family, it's almost like you've got a pass to do whatever you want. Everyone just respects you. I guess that says a lot about Ned's name. Uh, but she leads him away, further away from his camp, and then she mocks him for being a virgin and says, like, you don't have to die that way, you can be with me. But it looks like it's part of an ambush because we see the wildlings appear and then John's outnumbered, there's crossbows and shit and arrows aimed at him. He's probably outnumbered like 20 to 1 and then Ygritte says that John should have taken her when he had the chance and now Jon Snow is kind of fucked here. But you know what, he spared her so will they spare him? We'll have to wait and see, but again, I just feel like with it, I feel like every arc is just dragged out, man. Like we're seven fucking episodes in here. Yeah, and then in the Quarf, we have Daenerys, desperate to find her stolen dragons. Then the 13, the Council of 13, 11 of them just get their throats slit. We have that weird-looking guy that just multiplies, so there's Teleports, one, there's, there's one of them, but then literally his face just spawns everywhere, and there's like a hundred different versions of him. And I believe him and the big black guy, whose name is also escaping me, they're trying to get the dragons, they're trying to steal the dragons, so... Uh, Mormont, Jorah helps Daenerys escape and um, yeah that, that's pretty much it again more filler in the, the quarf and uh, there's just not really a, a lot happening I don't think you need to include this in every episode if there's not much to show then maybe just don't show it yeah I agree with that again that, I think that is the problem like you're getting these wee snap these wee snaps each location and I feel like if you just missed an episode with a few of them Although what I would say is, no Stannis again. When was the last time we've seen Stannis? Yeah, where the hell is Stannis? The anyway. He's on his boots. Da, 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 da. Who, who died this episode? We had uh, Sir Alton Lannister. We had 11 of the 13, including the Spice King, the Silk King, and the Copper King. Uh, a couple of Winterfell shepherds. Billy fell. and Jack. Billy and Jack. So there you go. And at least 20 Lannister soldiers. At least 20 Lannister soldiers. Can't really remember the 20 Lannister soldiers that were taken down. But there you go, guys. That's your deaths. And that was the episode. What are you rating this one out of 10? A man without honour. I'm going to say it was an episode without quality. I'm going to give a five. I thought it was as bang average as an episode can get, man. Is it up there with the worst episodes of Game of Thrones so far? Probably, but what he says, even when they're even when they're not overly exciting, there's a lot happening. I can never say there's an uneventful episode. Like even though like not much moved forward, at the same time there's a lot happening. It's weird. Even when nothing is happening, you feel like you still need to watch the episode. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a six. You're going to get a five. Uh, just season two is not at the same level as season one, in my opinion. But with three episodes left. Hopefully. But the problem is, there's just nowhere near been as much major deaths as season one. I was going to say this episode was written by David Benoit, but not quite. But David close Benoff. Enough. <laughs> close enough. David <laughs> Benoff. Anyway, anyway, guys, catch you in the next one. Being Fog uh, Entertainment, five and a half out of ten. Until next time, peace.